live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Right now, live at 5, a manhunt spreading Metro Detroit wide. This person is armed and dangerous. A suspect believed to be responsible for four homicides. We have seen so much of this this week, we couldn't have possibly used up all that sun for the weekend. We'll see if there's anything left in the tank. He's back and he means business. Whatever happened in the last 10 years, we're expecting to double down in the next 10 years, so hang on. In his first speech since suffering a stroke, Dan Gilbert says his work in Detroit is far from done. Signs of a stroke from last May were still visible, but that did not stop Gilbert from taking the stage and laying out some more very big plans for the city. Business Editor Rod Maloney is live tonight, and Rod, it was great to see him, and he made one thing clear. He is not letting that stroke stop him. No, he's a full steam ahead, Kimberly. And here's the thing, we all know that he owns most of the Detroit skyline, or at least in the Greektown Casino's case, he used to own it. And uh, today he was picking up the Cranes Detroit Business Newsmaker of the Decade Award. He was happy to expect, happy to accept rather, and say much to go along with it. Dan Gilbert rode to the stage in a wheelchair. An attendant not only worked to help him stand, but stayed close at Gilbert's side during the entire speech, meant to go seven minutes and went about a half hour. That a leader's job is not to create more followers. A leader's job is to create more leaders. And I think we've we had the honor of doing that in our family of companies, which is why it can continue in my absence, which I'm hoping isn't going to be too long, but it was long enough already to have a baby. It's been nine months. <laughs> Gilbert's trademark humor came mixed with heartfelt appreciation and introspection. He said Detroit had lost its desire to take risks years ago, but it's changing. A mix of old and new economies is taking hold. He looked back at old speeches during the bad old days and praised Detroit for how far he and the city have come. Detroit is just a much tighter city relationship-wise than it's ever been, at least that I've noticed. And only that's the kind of environment that great things will happen. Gilbert held the podium with his right hand his left arm still by his side, his voice faint, but his forward commitment to the city remains strong. And because we're, we're going to double down ourselves. Whatever happened in the last 10 years, we're expecting to double down in the next 10 years. So hang on. Well, as you can see there, the crowd was decidedly with Dan Gilbert. They were very enthusiastic, very happy to see him, laughed at a lot of his jokes. And uh, they, there was also sort of a collective sigh of relief that the guy who has been really the cheerleader and the financial backing behind Detroit's renaissance is still among us and still committed. In the meantime, I talked to Mayor Mike Duggan, who's known Dan Gilbert for many years, and he said that uh, he's very happy to see Dan Gilbert back with his mind fully intact. He said the body... Well, that will come along eventually. Back to you. Indeed. And, and Rod, we received an impressive bit of news from that Cranes event. Lots of money committed to another project. Tell us about it. Right. It's going to be going right over here at the old jail site, and it's coming from a source that was brought here essentially by Dan Gilbert himself. We'll tie all of that together coming up on Local 4 News at 6. We'll be looking forward to it. We'll see you then, Rod. Thanks. New at 5, a search underway right now for a man connected to two shootings that left three people dead. Take a good look at Kenyell Brown. A $10,000 reward is being offered for tips that lead to his capture. Police say he should be considered armed and very dangerous. Sean Lay has been working his sources. Do we have any leads on his whereabouts yet, Sean? The search has been going on for Absolutely. some time. Absolutely. That's right, Devin. Uh, just checked with investigators here at Detroit Police and U.S. Marshals. Leads now, tips now coming in, especially after the U.S. Marshals announced just after noon today they're raising the reward money to catch Ken Yell Martin from $5,000 to $10,000. So stop what you're doing, look at your screen because police are saying this is a matter of life and death. Be on the lookout for a flight dodge caravan. Where is 40 year old Kenyell Brown at this hour? Police believe he's in this van, belonging to a man investigators believe he shot and killed overnight. Texas plane of North X ray Lima 7787, possibly occupied by Kenyon Brown. This be on the lookout broadcasted to police Metro Detroit wide all day long. What in conjunction with several homicides, suspects considered to be armed and dangerous. We're emphatically requesting the public's help. 
Uh, this person is armed and dangerous. Uh, they have already proven that they're capable of carrying out homicides. Detroit police investigating the murder of a 41 year old man inside a shirt shop on East 8 Mile at 11 last night. Brown came up as the suspect. He's the same man wanted for the double murder of Dorian Patterson and Kimberly Green in River Rouge on February 6th, plus another homicide that also took place in River Rouge. Kenyell Brown now wanted for four murders right now. And this guy should be considered extremely armed and dangerous. Uh, extremely armed, armed and dangerous. His whole background area is, you know, the River Rouge E-Course e area, but obviously he's straight out of that area. We think he's still back. Every day he's out there is a, is a risk or a threat that somebody else could get killed out here. U.S. Marshals Detroit Police very motivated to locate Kenyal Brown right now. Let's focus on two big clues here for all of us to look at. One is the Black Dodge Caravan Texas plate on there. Plate number on clickondetroit.com. Also, we showed you a picture of Brown wearing a camouflage jacket. Investigators telling us he often is wearing that jacket. So two things to spot. Devin, back to you. Uh, Sean, it was certainly unclear at the beginning of all this. Have we gotten any closer to understanding the motives behind these killings? Robbery is the motive. They do not think Brown has much money. So he drives mm. around the area from downriver to uh, Metro Detroit wide, either befriending people or visiting people that he knows to rob them. And in some cases, then he shoots them allegedly. Wow. Yeah. All right, Sean. An Ohio man is facing charges after the incident earlier this week involving a gun found at Greektown Casino Hotel. 23-year-old Marlo Smith is set to be arraigned on charges of carrying a concealed weapon. A security guard found an AK-47 Tuesday hidden behind an ice machine. Investigators say Smith had possession of that weapon when he entered the hotel. The weekend has arrived and very nice to see the sun staying up later. Look That's how high right. it is in the sky still. The days are getting a little yeah. longer and uh, we're hoping to keep this sunny streak going into the weekend. Let's uh, get over to Ben and get a peek at the weekend forecast. We're hoping, uh, keeping those fingers crossed, but if it was our luck, this would be going away just as we roll into Saturday and Sunday. But it looks like our luck has turned because we're going to carry these bright skies into both Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures have already warmed a bit compared to yesterday. This is all really the only issue we've got to watch going into the weekend of the wind chills. We're going to run those down in your four zone forecast coming up, but might as well check out the highs. This is the best part of the forecast 40s for both Saturday and Sunday. Tons of sunshine, especially early clouds do start to stack up late. We'll look at the snow that's coming after the sunshine on Sunday and some pretty cool pictures of the lakes you'll want to see coming up in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. Shelby Township Police say they have arrested the man wanted for hiding cameras inside a tanning salon. The arrest happened this morning at a home not too far from the salon where those cameras were found. Nick Monticelli spoke with investigators, and he's got new information into how police believe the guy pulled it off. Good evening. This is the home here in Macomb Township at 23 and Hayes that the Shelby Township Police Department executed a search warrant on this afternoon after arresting a 38 year old man they believe is the one behind installing hidden cameras inside of a tanning salon. You might remember just a few days ago, an off duty Shelby Township police officer was at Chili Peppers at 25 Mile Road and Van Dyke when that officer noticed something suspicious which turned out to be hidden cameras inside of a tanning salon, inside of one individual room. That, of course, sparked a whole lot of concern about privacy and what other cameras could be. Chili Poppers was very cooperative, found no other cameras in any other of, of their salons. Now it turns out that police believe here in Shelby Township that a 38-year-old man is behind it and was a customer posing as one to install those cameras. One of the girls that worked at the Chili Pepper salon identified him as a real creepy guy and said this guy, is just, he's in here all the time and he really makes me uncomfortable and you might want to look at him. And during our investigation, we started giving him a close look. Uh, we discovered that he had an IT background, but it led us to arresting him. Chili Peppers closed all of their locations temporarily to check to make sure there were no additional cameras and there were none. Now the police chief is happy that they can move forward saying this certainly shattered some securities. We had over 100 phone calls from people that were uh, members over there, you know, going there and getting tan and very concerned. It's it's very upsetting. Now, as they continue searching for evidence inside of the home, they say the next steps are to put everything together, put the case together, bring it to the prosecutor and hopefully have this 38 year old arraigned sometime soon. In Macomb Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4.
The Shelby Township Police Chief says it's unclear how many victims there are because they're not sure how long the cameras were in place. Suspect in the case is facing felony eavesdropping charges. There are dangerous signs the coronavirus might be breaking out beyond China and spreading across the world. There's been a surge of cases in South Korea, more than 200 reported, and many more people being treated for symptoms. In Iran, there have been at least 18 cases with four deaths. The World Health Organization says it is most concerned about cases with no direct link to the virus, such as travel history or contact with a confirmed case.